everyone. I'm so glad that you could join us today. I'm Amber and I'm joined by Lovia. Hi, Lovia. Hi, everyone. And we are both editors at the New York Times for Kids. The New York Times for Kids is a special section that is made just for kids and it comes out on the last Sunday of every month, which means that the most recent section, May, just came out this past Sunday. We hope that many of you have gotten to see it. I have um, one right here. If you can see part of that. And you may notice, be able to read on the cover that there's a word there, friends. And that has actually become our semi-theme for this section. Lovie, would you like to tell us more about how we ended up on friendship for the May issue? Yeah, definitely. So last month when we asked our readers to tell us about how they were faring being stuck at home during quarantine, we noticed a theme in the responses. Everyone, including myself, really misses their friends. Um, Frida Gerhardt, who's 11 years old, put it perfectly. She said, the whole world has changed and the closest I can get to my friends is FaceTime. So we decided that the May issue, to, to dedicate the May issue to friendship and staying in touch during the pandemic. The issue includes activities from experts and kids like you um, to help you connect during this time from writing letters to your friends to hosting a dance party. Awesome. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. We're first going to actually hear from three different uh, kids who contributed to the section about all different activities that you can do with your friends. And then we're going to hear from you. So while this event is going on, we definitely want to hear how you've been connecting with your friends during the pandemic, as well as your recommendations for how to be a good friend during these times. So please use the Q&A function that you can see in Zoom, click on Q&A and type in Again, things that you've been doing already with your friends to stay connected and any advice for other people about how to be good friends right now. And if you include your name, your age, and where you're listening from, we're going to read those responses later, as well as they may come in handy for ne the next issue. So we really want you to submit. So uh, let's see. One note, this event is being recorded. And with that, we're going to start with Emerson Weber, who is going to tell us about writing letters to your friends. Hi, Emerson. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Okay. Can you tell us first where you are and how lockdown life has been for you? Um, right now, I am in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I've been quarantining for a while, so it's kind of, got, it's kind of gotten boring having to stay away from my friends like you mentioned, but I really enjoyed being able to do online school and not having to wake up as early. Yeah. So Emerson, I actually first heard of you um, on Twitter because your dad's tweets went viral. Can you tell us all, you know, what was that about? What happened for, you know, your name to be on Twitter? Well, it started just as me writing a letter to my mailman and then they, them sharing it with USPS workers and them writing letters to me. So then by then it was kind of a sweet little story. So my dad put it on Twitter and people just really blew up because people like seeing a positive story like that right now. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us all how many, how many letters that's been? How many letters you've been writing? Well, so I usually, before all this, I usually wrote yeah. about maybe 10 letters a week. But now it has to be at least 12 letters a day. My mailbox is constantly wow. filling up. Because I'm just really trying to respond to all those people and then they write back and I really enjoy it. Wow, 12 letters a day. So what do you write in these letters? Um, I write little tidbits of my brother Finn. He's a really big part of my life and I always enjoy being able to share about him. I write about the books I'm reading. Right now I'm reading Harry Potter for like the eighth time. And I like to ask questions so they have a reason to write back and it shows that I'm interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, something we learned while we were working with you for the May section was that you also do something with the envelopes. Can you describe what that is? Yeah, so I love to decorate my envelopes, make them look like a piece of art. I probably spend more time on my envelopes than I do on my letters because I feel like if people see a decorated envelope in their mailbox, they might read it first. And I just want them to also be happy when they see it and I hope it makes their day when they see a piece of art in their mail. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it takes up a lot of your time. Yeah, but I really do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
So since you're more or less an expert on writing letters to friends and you've been doing 12 a day, even 10 a week was a lot. <laughs> yeah. What are tips and tricks maybe for others who want to write a letter and are just getting started, things that you think that work or don't work? Well, I would just say ask them lots of questions. It fills up space. And also, if you have any good jokes up your sleeve, I would write one down. It's a nice it's a nice thing to add at the end just to make them laugh. And it's always fun to decorate the envelope because that's that's the part that they see first. So I would definitely put some time in even using bright colors on your envelope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering, you know, what is it specifically about writing the letters that you think really helps with connection or getting to know people um, versus, you know, obviously you could text your friends or email them or FaceTime. How is it different? Well, a lot of people have a phone right now, but the point, I don't have a phone, but the point is that I like to write letters because it shows people that you really took time to think about them and write a letter to them is, I think, a little more meaningful than a quick text and it really makes their day. Mm -hmm. Of all of those new responders um, that you've gotten after sending your letter to the mailman, do you feel like you're already getting new friendships? I do. I've probably gotten a couple more, probably like five more pen pals. I try to keep it limited, so I always have time to write back, but I'll, I write back pretty quickly when people write to me. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I guess just one more question for me. I was wondering, you know, um, you've been sending these amazing letters. Do you have one or two favorites that stick out to you that you've received? Um, I received a couple. We've started a new pen pal relationship from this boy named Ben in Arizona. And he's just really funny and he's a great illustrator in his letters. So they like to illustrate, some people like illustrate their letters or they put wow. designs in their envelopes and those always make me really happy. Amazing. Awesome, Lovia, do you have any other questions for Emerson? Yeah, I just have one question, Emerson, which we talked about a little bit on the phone, which was when you write to someone who might maybe won't write back to you, like you and your best friend who like, what do you think that that letter does for your friend and how does it make her feel? Well, I'm sure it makes them feel appreciated and noticed by me, even if they don't want to write back. I like writing to them just because it makes me happy. That sounds so nice. And guess what? Now we might write to you and so we can get a letter. <laughs> a letter. All right. Thanks so much, Emerson. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to hear about movie nights. Lovia? Yeah. From Lulu Thompson, who's coming from Illinois. Hi, Hi. Lily. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm so glad that we're talking again um, because we talked on the phone the first time to talk about like you organizing movie nights. So why don't we start with you just telling us where you are and how quarantine has been so far. I'm in Libertyville, Illinois and quarantine, um, well, it's boring and, <laughs> but like, it's fine. Yeah. It's Is fine. school over? Yeah. Yeah. Who we'll just finished today. Okay, cool. So can you tell us like why you started organizing movie nights with your friends? Well, I got bored. And so my sister like said like um, she started doing it. And so I was like, oh, that might be fun. So I started um, organizing movie nights mm -hmm. and my friends like them too. So we started doing it together. Yeah. How many movie nights have you had so far? Um, well, we're going to have more in the future, but we so far only had two, but we're going to have more. We're yeah. planning on it. And how do you plan them? Like, what, do you use any special apps? What kinds of movies do you watch? How do you pick them? Um, so we, I text my friends and they give times that they're free. We normally do it at night because the day they are doing stuff like school yeah. and um, so when we finally have a time figured out I ask them what movie they want to watch of course they don't care what movie and so it's <laughs> going to be very hard it's very hard to find a movie to watch so I either just pick movies that 
I've watched that they might like Mm -hmm. or popular movies that a lot of people are like. Yeah. What was the last movie that you guys watched? Ant-Man and the Wasp. Nice. Had you already seen it when you picked it? Yeah. What were the reviews from your friends like? Um, my friends liked it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And in what ways have the movie nights helped your friends? Like, have you guys talked about how they made you feel after doing them? Well, like, we're just happy to hear from each other. And we, like, um, since one of my friends, they can't, she can't really um, get onto the movie, um, I FaceTime, uh, Google Duo her. And cool. so I get, I'm, like, I can only see her face. Mm-hmm. And so we watch it together. But with the other friends, we just chat in the group chat. Yeah, can you tell everyone what app you're using to like watch the movies that lets you oh. chat in the group chat? We're uh, using Netflix Party. The host only needs Netflix. The, everyone else doesn't need Netflix. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. <laughs> do, you have, do you have any tips for other people who might want to organize a movie night? Like what has worked and what hasn't worked? Um, well, you probably want to be by the Wi-Fi server. <laughs> <laughs> Underrated. <Yeah. laughs> and yeah, it's um, and you want to probably be in a dark room, um, so you can see it better. Yeah, and you probably want to charge the computer or whatever device they're using, because it drains the battery a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you make any snacks while you're watching movies with your friends? Do you guys coordinate like what you're gonna eat? I'm not allowed to have popcorn, so like. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I try to find something else. There's yeah. not really much to eat with braces, so that's, that's really true. We all there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one more question for you, Lily, because I really liked when we talked that you wrote this to me after. Um, You said that we really need friends at this time now more than ever. They support us, and at least in my opinion, they can entertain you. It's important to stay in touch with Google Duo, FaceTime, or texting, because that's how you keep a friendship going. You have to try harder because it's easy when you see each other every day at school. Do you want to talk a little bit more about, like, how you've been staying in touch with your friends? Yeah, so um, we've been making group chats with texting, FaceTime, and Google Duo. Mm -hmm. And with Google Duo, you can like send videos, you can hear each other. And with it's kind of easier. It's I like Google Duo it's easier than texting and FaceTime because FaceTime you have to actually like FaceTime them. You can't just like it's uh Google Duo is like Snapchat. Got it. So got it. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Lily, for being here and for yeah. talking to us about organizing a movie night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so next up, we're going to have Blake and Dylan Metzler joining us to talk about organizing virtual sleepovers. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? We're doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. 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 Okay, so the first question, very easy. Where are you guys now, and how's quarantine going? So we're in London, UK. And quarantine's been okay. We're, we're allowed to go out now for daily walks, for exercise, which has been quite, it's, it's been helping quite a yeah, lot being helps. able to yeah. go into the woods, but it's good. That makes sense. That makes sense. What do you miss most about not seeing your friends? Um, well, like the face-to-face contact, being like near them. Normally it's, it's a lot more relaxing, but when you're online with them, it just, it's not the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time it can glitch and stuff, so all things will cut out, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's like beware of technology. Um, I want you guys to talk a little bit about the virtual sleepovers that you've thrown, which we put in this um, most recent issue of the kids edition. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us what you do during them? Okay, so um, first of all, I heard my sister was doing these sleepover things, and then I saw it on TikTok, and I was like, I have to do this with my friends, so... <laughs> Um, I made a group chat with my friends and we all found a time to do it together and we used the same, we used Netflix party, but we were also FaceTiming at the same time so we could watch the movie in sync 
and then chat face to face while watching the movie. Mm -hmm. Nice. And do you guys like play any games or have the same kind of food or like how does that work? Yeah, sometimes we try and like sync our meals so we're all eating <laughs> at the same time while watching the movie. Uh -huh. They'll have <laughs> everyone get ice cream or everyone get popcorn. Yeah. yeah we that's awesome. A few games. There's this one game, I think it was called Scribble.io, is where um you'd invite everyone to your little group. And then um, it would randomly pick someone to draw a random object. Nobody else knows what the thing is. Then you have to guess what the thing the thing they've drawn is. Cool. Oh my god, that's so cool! I'm gonna try this. And how many people do you guys like usually invite to your sleepovers? Normally up to four, because of if there's too many, then you can't really get a chance to talk, and it's a bit confusing. Yeah. yeah. So the most we've had is four extra people, but it wasn't. It was a bit too hard with too many people talking at once. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you and your friends talk about how the sleepovers make you feel? Or like, do they say like, this is so cool, thanks for organizing it? Do you get any responses like that? Um, well, yeah, because um, with our group chats, a lot of the time it will be that certain group. So we'll do it a lot of the time with that certain group. So um, a lot of the time they've uh, said afterwards they feel a lot more happy and it's lightened the mood of it and it's made that day which yeah I have one fun. more question before I throw it to Amber um to see if she has any other questions but can you guys give us your best sleepover tips like what has gone really well what hasn't worked so well um one thing which didn't go so well was for some people that are, the wi-fi is either um quite bad or um for one of my friends they uh, had Netflix but for some reason it just didn't work but then we can just chat on FaceTime. Well, yeah. Any mm -hmm. tips? Definitely be near your Wi-Fi or not have everyone online at the same time. Yeah, it can get quite <laughs> slow. Yeah, and make sure that all your friends are in the same group chat because one time one friend like had no idea when we were doing it, so they arrived like an hour late. So that'd be, <laughs> that'd be a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. like real life sometimes. Mm -hmm. It can be quite hard to coordinate it the first time, but once everyone knows how it all works and knows what time we're doing it can be quite easy yeah to get everything yeah. ready my last question for you i was wondering you know once shutdown is over and like you said you started to take walks which is really nice what is like the most the thing you're most looking forward to doing ice skating yeah dylan oh. yes, i love ice skating, ice skating. i, I definitely i definitely miss going to my friends houses so we can actually relax together and be like not really far apart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely okay thanks blake and dylan thanks, thanks for coming us. okay bye bye <laughs> okay so now we're turning to responses that have been submitted by all of you um and there's still time so again if you see the q a feature that's down in zoom you can absolutely still type in one we want to hear what have you been doing to keep in touch with your friends as well as two if you have any advice about how to be a good friend in this moment so we're actually going to turn now to a couple of those yeah i also want to say like Strong Wi-Fi is an underrated aspect of this time. <laughs> I love that practical tip, like make sure your Wi-Fi is working. Yeah, yeah, it's like none of this can really happen without the Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I Do love wanna... practical sleepover, so cool. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to um, start? Yeah, so the first one I see is from Flora and she's 13. And she says, I'm doing a virtual cooking class on Saturday with five friends from California to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And I love this because also in the May issue, Lovia, you wrote a little bit about this, about like setting up a way to show off your skills or to teach yes. skills with friends. Yeah, this actually combines two of like my favorite activities, which is one, throwing a dinner party. I know a cooking class is not technically a dinner party, um, and then also showing off skills. So I really liked that one, Flora. Mm -hmm. From Brady. Like, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just want to say really quickly that like, it's also cool because, you know, again, we've heard from so many of you that about how hard and difficult and just sad it is to be without your friends. But Flora's example also shows a positive that she's getting to do virtual cooking with people from all different states, which I assume she necessarily 
be seeing those friends that often. So in some ways, this moment can bring together friends that weren't seeing each other before. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. The next one, Brady, six, and Harrison, five from Illinois said, to see our friends, we just started this week riding bikes in the, in the parking lot across the street after dinner. We wear masks and it's so much fun. This one is really nice because I feel like we've been talking a lot about reopening and like what people are looking forward to doing and how that's going to change, you know, our abilities to see our friends. And I feel like socially distant bike rides are of the future. Yeah. Yeah. And we've heard that from a few different readers about the bike rides, which I think is awesome because then you can see your friend in person, even if it's a little far away and you're still getting to like do something, explore instead of just sit around. Yeah. Okay, this is really fun. Cole, who lives in Boston and is nine, he says, um, okay, so what they do is they play a Zoom scavenger hunt with his friends and there's a prize at the end. So he says, my mom printed and hid six clues from my friend's mom and we helped each other solve the clues while we each did our own scavenger hunt in our own houses. Each had a prize in the end. So when I found the answer to my clue, it gave my friends the next clue. Oh my that God. Is, that's a good idea. It's like pretty complex. <laughs> yeah. That's really fun. It's like the scavenger hunt plus like problem solving plus you're like still doing it with your friends even though you're in different spaces. Yeah, that's so intense. Should we do that with the team? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Calvin 10 from Portland, Oregon. I can go to the park to talk to my friends and play soccer with them. Okay, this is still on the reopening kick, which I'm like, really excited about and we can't do that quite yet in New York but um socially distant outdoor sports is also like a good idea I like that mm -hmm. um Grace from New Jersey who's eight she says my friend and I play board games together over FaceTime we take out the same game and move the pieces together which is really cool <laughs> also because like we also did some research on games that you can play virtually too. Do you remember mm -hmm. any of those, Lovia? Yeah, well, there was Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons. Yeah. yeah, that was the big one. And then there, we listed a couple other like websites you could play more traditional games, you know, like chess or Scrabble. Uh, I think Words with Friends is very popular during this time. Uh, so yeah, those are just a couple of the ones listed in this month's issue. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, Nina Eleven said, I've been calling dinner parties. We eat at the same dinner, we eat the same dinner at the same time, then we talk and paint our nails. I just, this is my spirit answer. Um, one, it combines dinner parties, which is also in this issue. We have a lot of tips for how to throw the perfect dinner party, um, which includes like obviously setting the same time, making the same meal, um, maybe adding a little like your favorite juice. Uh, but I also like that Nina says, app says that afterwards they talk and paint their nails together, which I feel like really extends um, the dinner party, and maybe it could even turn into a virtual sleepover. Yeah. Similarly, um, Nanixi, who is 11, she says she plays Zoom charades, which is a great idea. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> I love all these ideas, how they're like combining doing something like physical in your own space with the virtual component, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. And it's like a good way to like, charades especially is a good way to still laugh and right. make each other with your friends which yeah you weren't doing at school anymore i think that just to add on to that point like and from the package that i really liked is that there are ways to connect with people you know while still using our digital mediums like facetime um, or zoom or google hangouts um, but also do activities that are more in person and so like this was we had a lot of these in the virtual sleepover article uh, where two other kids talked about playing card games um, manually and like printing and like sending each other the cards and then printing them out and then playing it over their virtual sleepover. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's see. Let's see, Lauren 11 from New York City says, I like to do workouts with my friends. It's more fun when you have a partner. Um, I love this because I have started, just like you've started, Amber, doing like a 30-day yoga challenge, but you have like someone to do it with, which is really cool. Um, but I agree, it's like a nice way to get your body moving, which really helps when you have to stay inside all the time. Um, and it's true, like I definitely agree, Lauren, like it's so much more fun when you have like a partner. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Here is Scarlett, who is 11 and she lives in California. She says, I've mostly been playing some online video games with my friends. Um, she also, I live in an apartment building so I can go to the pool with my friends. The only problem is they are horrible at being six feet apart, but I still hang out with them. It's just not the same as being able to see them all the time and go to their houses and things like that. Yeah, and that's super interesting. Like you said, as far as like, we've started shifting into reopening and all, we're all still being really careful. And what does that start to look like? You know, you'll get to see your friends, but will you be wearing masks or will you have to stay apart from each other? And it's still gonna not be entirely back to normal the way that it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you want to make sure that you, you and your friends are all, you know, on the same page about what safety protocols you're, you know, abiding by. So you all feel comfortable. Yeah, definitely. I feel like communication is very key here. Like, are you comfortable? Am I comfortable? Which is also in this package about like how being so apart from your friends means that you have to, you know, learn to be really direct about like what makes you uncomfortable or when you need help or when you miss them. And I think that's like a really interesting part of this moment. Mm -hmm. but See. One I really like. Xavier Six, Marilyn said, we have Zoom play dates where we share our favorite toys with each other. In one, we even watched cartoons together. I really like this one. I like the sharing your favorite toys component because it kind of is like a way to have a play date without really having a play date. Um, and then you can like talk about why things are like your favorite. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one, Xavier. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe just two more. I'll do one and then Lovia, you can wrap up. Sounds good. Um, Sam from A and from Portland says, a cool idea is to FaceTime with your friends while you're doing school. And I really like that. We heard that from a couple of readers too about doing homework with your friends and school is about wrapping up. There's probably not much else to do, but I like the idea of like school and, you know, is often a place where you're seeing your friends and now you're not getting to see them, but you can mm -hmm. still FaceTime and do your homework and it actually makes the homework more fun too. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. The last one's always the hardest to pick. I don't want this to end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's still a lot of suggestions. They're really great. I know. You guys are keep sending them in. We love these. Kenley10 says, over quarantine, I've been taking piano lessons with people around the state. I really like this one because I think it com it like combines a lot of what we've already talked about, which is that, you know, one, like quarantine is bringing people together who might not be able to actually be together in real life, like in terms of proximity. And two, like it sounds like you're learning something new um, and that's really fun. I think that this is a really nice time to maybe pick up some skills or activities or like me, I'm trying to figure out what hobbies are. Um, so Kenley, I love this, learning to play piano. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's all we have time for today. Um, absolutely. If you still have an idea about how to connect with your friends, or if you just have suggestions about what you want to see in the next issue of the New York Times for Kids, you can continue to submit in that Q&A function, or you can write me and Lovia at kids at newyorktimes.com. So just send an email to kids at newyorktimes.com with any of your ideas, and we're happy to consider them for a future issue. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say that, you know, this is a one event of many and that you should check out other Times events, which is at timeseventsnewyorktimes.com. The next New York Times for Kids comes out on Sunday, June 28th, so we can we hope you can pick it up. And finally, thanks to everyone for attending and a special thank you for all our subscribers who make our work possible. So thanks again to Blake and Dylan, Emerson and Lou Lee, and thank you Lovia and to all of you. And Bye. thank you Amber. Bye.